Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today is new guitar day. I wanted to check out what can you get for, you know, minimal money. What, what can you get that's professional grade from Gibson um, for under a thousand dollars? So we're gonna have a look at that. But before we do, we're gonna unbox it and I'm gonna re record this so you can all see how the box arrived to me. Um, most of the time from AMS, I have a pretty good uh, good results. You know, stuff gets to me uh, pretty much undamaged. But today, it's not so much the case. So here we go. Let me turn this around and you guys will see what I'm talking about. All right, so the box has this big old lovely gash in it. And if we move it around, that seems to be pretty much the only damage we have here. But it feels to me that this does not have a box inside a box like Gibson's usually do. It feels to me like it's just been poorly packaged, which is not common or usual for American music supply. So here we go. Try to do this with one hand. one-handed getting dizzy yet everyone there we go all right so let's see what we got all right well I was mistaken it is, there is a box inside a box so I'm gonna get this out of here and we'll be right back all right everyone we're back so I got the box out I already went ahead and pre-cut it, but I have not opened it. So let's see what we got here. It is not easy to hold a camera and open a box at the same time. So I do want you all to see what I'm seeing. Though. So like I said, it was a box in a box. We have some bubble wrap. And we have some kind of cardboard. Oh, that's clever. That is a very intelligent innovation. You see how they did that? All right. Okay. All right, so there it is. And judging from the way the bag is tilted. Oh, well, look at that heavy-duty zipper. Look at that. That's actually really nice. I would call this an upgraded gig bag. Oh, look. It's even got a leather padded handle. All right, so, so far, so good. Uh, let's see what we got. You get a nylon Gibson strap, the old font. You get the bag. You get a normal truss rod adjustment. You get the paperwork. You get your baby photos. So let's put that back in the pouch. So that is a lot to get started with. So let's see how this comes out. All right. Oh, here it is. It's Gibson Les Paul special tribute. And this is supposed to be wine red. Yep, I guess that's wine red. Yeah, it's like reddish mahogany. Hmm. 
neck is beefier than a lot of people have said. A lot of people say it's a 60s slum taper. This is not a 60s slum taper. This is absolutely a, this neck is a 50s neck. No question about it. I own a 50s Les Paul standard and this neck is identical. Not complaining, I'm just saying. All right, so I'm gonna get us in some better lighting and we will go over the guitar inch by inch and we'll do a little playing test. All right, and at this point, if you don't mind hitting the subscribe button, I'd appreciate it. Give me a like while you're at it. And uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll be right back. Alrighty, so I got it in my other room, my music room. And I just wanted to point out a couple things real quick. So first off, the neck is warped. Secondly, the fret edges, especially right up in here, you need a tetanus shot. I'm really disappointed. And I will say, as horribly out of tune as that is right now, probably better that they didn't ship it under full pressure but just have a look at this now a curved neck is one thing but a warped neck is another thing altogether and you guys could see that right all right so at any rate um yeah bad fret edges sloppy and this isn't even the best lighting so oh and there's a tremendous amount of dirt and dust on the fingerboard itself i don't know if this is gonna come out i mean it's a thousand it's, it's a not it comes in at under a thousand dollars I mean, you could see even the tarnishing on the frets. You know, this is... Well, we'll have to see. Like, right now, it needs a full setup. So, just to make, make this abundantly clear. If you are starting out, and, you know, you don't know a lot about guitars and you go and buy a guitar like this, you're going to have to spend another $150 to $200 just to make it play right, okay? So this could be just a bad one, and we did just get a bad snow, but, you know, these guitars, the way Gibson's factory is set up, they're supposed to leave the factory dried and in better condition than this. So I don't know if they're having a problem, you know, getting qualified, you know, skilled labor in their factory right now or what. The nitro doesn't seem to be cracking. It did sit inside when it came off the FedEx truck. It sat inside for, you know, almost six hours before I opened it up. You know, the finish is okay. I mean, it's a nice looking instrument until you get right up on it. And then you start to see some of the challenges. I mean, you know, it's not the best that they've done. I mean, I got the the I got the V tribute and that thing was amazing. So I figured, hey, why not try this one? But so far, I'm disappointed. All right, let's tune it up, try to adjust the neck, and see if it is even playable. Be right back. All right, welcome back. So I wanted to show you what the truss rod cavity looks like. It's pretty clean. I had to give it a quarter turn. And we're, we're getting there. I mean, you usually sit overnight, and you'll see results. This neck is a freaking huge baseball bat. This neck is massive, especially like right up in here. 
I mean, I, I wish I had calipers so I could take measurements for you guys. I need to get some calipers. But, I mean, this is, this is wide, very wide, very fat. It's, um, I mean, you know, acoustically... I mean, you know, it's got the ingredients. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, but the pickups are muddy. I'm going through my uh, Tweed Deluxe. A positive thing would be that this bridge is actually uh, pretty good for intonation. The switch feels good, the knobs all work. pickup now. And then all the way open on the tone. Again, this neck, this neck is huge. This is nothing like any of the reviews that I watched. And you know how we all are. Before we, we get something to try it out, we watch a million YouTube videos and we try to hope that it's going to live up to the hype or, or, or at least the videos that we watched. But um, this, I, I would say, was a fail. Um, it's just not there. I mean, you know, maybe this is a bad one. You know, I'll give him another shot. You know, because I, I love Gibson. I own a ton of Gibsons. Um, and I really wanted their bottom of the barrel entry level to be something to get people excited. But this isn't exciting. I mean, the neck is, is I mean... You know, unless you're doing like blues where you really want to fight for it or like alt rock, you know, I mean, even down here, I mean, it's just, it's a substantial neck. I mean, look right there. I mean, that'll give you an idea. There's a lot of wood there. I mean, it's a good student instrument, you know, I mean, if you have a thousand dollar budget and you have a young person that's big enough for a full size electric. You know, get it set up. Um, the fret ends, though. Really bumming me out, man. I mean, the, the, especially up here. I mean, it's like they didn't even try. I thought, the, I thought everything was plaqued in the Gibson factory, and I'm sure it is. But, but then what this tells me is this tells me that the fingerboard has shrunk substantially. That's what this is telling me, is that the finger, fingerboard is shrunk. And you can even feel it, like right here, where the neck meets the fingerboard, you can feel the gap between the neck and, and the board. So the board has shrunk. Now, granted, it's freezing outside, and it probably sat on a you know, FedEx truck for a day or two days or three days or whatever. And having said that, you know, even though it's a satin finish, there are no cracks. And you guys saw the condition the box was in when I received it. So, you know, 
you know, that's a miracle in and of itself that it even still has the, the neck attached, mainly because it's got a huge baseball bat of a, of a neck, so it's, it's does have maybe about an inch thick wood going on right there. To, and, and the weight, too. The weight is a lot heavier than I was hoping. You know, first, I've, I've had a lot of specials over the years, and um, they've always been around 8 pounds, between 7 and 8 pounds. This thing has got to be close to 10 pounds. I mean, this thing is heavier than my standard. It's just off camera. Um, now, you could upgrade these pickups, and, you know, maybe the P90 version is what I should have gone with. Uh, you know, I, I have guitars with P90s. That's one I wanted to see. You know, maybe could a modern player get with this? The biggest drawback is is if you're any kind of shredder, stay away from these. Unless you have hands as large as mine <laughs> and as large as like Steve Vai. Um, <laughs> strings of the guitar shift with so 10 to 42 um, the nut seems to be cut well again the intonation is good um, out of the box the neck has got a war is twisted the neck is twisted so 
it goes like like this. So that's I mean straight away I don't care how much you spend on the guitar. You got a twisted neck, you send it back. Period. Twisted neck, it goes back. Um, having said that, for some reason the intonation is on. And acoustically it's pretty loud. But this is absolutely nothing like my uh, Gibson Tribute uh, Flying V. It had a slim taper 60s neck. The pots felt really great. The pickups sounded a thousand times better. They're the same exact pickups. Um, they sound like mud in this one. They sound amazing in that one. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Guys, I, I'm just being real. So. <laughs> by please hit like subscribe share if you like videos like this you know let me know in the comments below um, Gibson's got a lot of praise from me but this one is going in the bin no it's going back so uh, thanks for stopping by and y'all take care and don't forget be kind to your neighbors everyone